Hey everybody, today we are looking at section 3.5. We're actually doing a little bit of 3.5 and a little bit of 3.6. Um, we're looking at slopes of lines and graphing lines today. So we're going to start by looking at the slopes of lines. So notice that this is stuff that you have seen before. Today is a complete throwback to algebra so that tomorrow when we talk about graphing and writing equations of parallel and perpendicular lines, you have that under control because you know how to do slopes and how to graph. So we're going to start there. So as a reminder from last year, when we look at slope, one way that we um, uh, kind of say it in layman's terms is rise over run. So remember that the rise is your change in Y. How far up and down do you go? Your run is your change in X and how far left and right do you go? So when we look at our slope formula, all right, we are looking at our y2 minus y1 over our x2 minus x1. So it's our change in y's over our change in x. And it can be any two points on the line, it doesn't matter where they are, can give you your slope. So if we look here, if I look at these two points, this is 1, 1, and this is 5, 7. Okay, so if I look at the rise here, I would do my, here, let me write in these points. Um, I said this was 5, 7 and 1, 1. Okay, I would do 7 minus 1, which is 6. So I have a rise of 6. If it's on a graph, you can also just count. And a run here of 4 by doing 5 minus 1. So I have 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. That means from this point, I can go up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2, and I get to this point. Okay, remembering about different types of slope. If we have a positive slope, it moves upwards as we go from left to right. A negative slope moves downwards as we move from left to right. A zero slope is a horizontal line and an undefined slope is a vertical line. So please, one thing that I wanna be sure of is that you're very cautious about using the term no slope. I don't know if that means no as in zero or no as in it doesn't exist so it's undefined. No slope for me is not clear. So please either use zero slope or undefined slope. Do not use the phrase no slope. Um, one way that we can think about slope is rate of change is how far and how fast are you changing um, as you move forward. So like if we're doing miles per hour and time and or miles traveled and then time, when we look at that and interpret that in a real world situation, that is miles per hour. Um, so your graphs are your rates of change. Your slope of your graph is your rate of change. How fast are you changing? Um, if you have questions about slope right now, go ahead and write it down. And let's go ahead and look at an example. All right, I want to use the slope formula to determine the slope of each of these two lines. So if I'm using the formula, that means I need to use, um, I need to label my points. So A is going to be at the point 2, 3, and B is going to be at the point 7, 5. So I'm going over 7, up 5. So my slope formula is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. This is one of the very, 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 very few times that I do not mind if you work horizontally. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and label my points as x1, y1, x2, y2. All right, so my y2 is 5 minus y1, which is 3. My x2 is 7 minus my x1, which is 2. So 5 minus 3 is 2. 7 minus 2 is 5. So I have a slope of 2 fifths. And we use the letter m a lowercase m, to represent slope. All right, let's look at B. D is at the point 4, 5. And C is at the point 4, negative 3. Okay, so I'm going to, again, label my x1, y1 and my x2, y2, remember it doesn't matter which one you call one and which one you call two as long as you are consistent. 
All right, so again, my slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Please be sure that you are writing your formula every time right now to get back in the habit of using it. So my y2 is a negative 3 minus y1, which is 5. x2 is 4 minus x1, which is 4. So I'm going to have negative 8 over 0. Um, worlds blow up when we divide by 0, so this means that we have an undefined slope. Okay, because our line again is vertical. So you can look back here and realize, okay, undefined slope, vertical line, we're good to go. So if you have any questions about example one, please go ahead and write it down now. All right, now let's take a look at actually looking at equations of lines. Okay, we have two different ways that we can write our lines. We write them in point slope, which is here where we have y minus y1 equals our slope times x minus x1. So m is slope and x1, y1 is any single point that is on the line. If you look over here, you will notice right here that this is the equation of the line in point slope form. Okay, so I have the point 4, 3 that's on the line. So it's x minus 4, y minus 3, and my slope is 2. All you do is plug it in. That's it. You leave it alone if you're looking for point slope form. Okay, slope intercept form is your y equals mx plus b that most of you are familiar with. Remember, m is your slope and b is your y intercept. So right here is that equation in y equals mx plus b format. If I have a vertical line, my equation of the line is x equals a. So when we look back at this example here, I have my x values, every point on this line is 4. So the equation of this line would be x equals 4. Your horizontal lines, your y value does not change. So your y value, if it's at the point 2, for each point on that line, your equation would be y equals 2. Okay, so vertical lines are x equals, horizontal lines are y equals. Okay, so let's take a look at actually writing equations of these lines. I want to write the equation of a line with slope 3. So my slope is 3, and my point is 2, 1. And I'm going to call that x1, y1. And I want to write the equation of the line in point slope form. So let's go back to what our point slope form was. It is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So my y stays as a y minus y1. Well, my y1 is 1, so minus 1 equals my slope, which we were told was 3, times x minus x1, which is 2. And that's it. That is the answer. That is the equation in point slope form. You do not have to do anything else to it. All right. Let's take a look at B. I want to write the equation of a line that's through these two points in slope intercept form. All right. So here's the deal. I have two points. I need to find my slope. So if I label this as x1, y1 and x2, y2. Okay, remember that your slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so I'm going to have 2 minus 4 over negative 1 minus 0. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 1 minus 0 is a negative 1, so I have a slope of 2. Because remember, negative or negative is a positive. Now let's take a look for a second at this point right here at 0, 4. If I kind of sketch that on a graph, I go over 0 and up 4. Does that make sense that this is actually the y-intercept? So your b is the y value where it crosses the y-axis at 4. And again, 2 is our slope, so 2 is m. All right, so again, this happens to be our um, 
whatchamacallit, um, our y-intercept. Sorry, lost my train of thought. Okay, so our slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Okay, so we have y. We found our slope was 2, and our y-intercept was a positive 4. So this is our equation in slope-intercept form. All right, I have a line with an x-intercept of 2. So that means that this point here is 2, 0. And a y-intercept of 3, which is the point 0, 3. And I want to write it in point-slope form. So the first thing I need, no matter what, I still need my slope. So if I label this as x1, y1, and x2, y2. Okay, I'm going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, y2 is a 3 minus 0. And then for x2 is a 0 minus x1, which is a 2. So my slope is 3 over negative 2. And remember that it doesn't matter where you put your negative. Had you put these in the other order, you would have had a positive 3 over a negative 2. Or excuse me, a negative 3 over a positive 2. It doesn't matter where the negatives are or which point you put first. So now, when we talk about point-slope form, my point-slope form again is y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. I have two points and I have my slope. So I can pick a point. I'm going to pick this point. Okay. I have y minus 0 equals my slope of negative 3 halves times x minus 2. The only thing, I'm going to slide up a little bit here. The only thing we have to worry about with this one is changing this to a y because we don't want to leave a minus 0 anywhere. Okay, that's not something that's going to be what we want to do, okay? So I have this equation here. Now, let's say you wanted to use the other point. That would be absolutely fine as well. I could do y minus y1, which in this case is going to be a 3, equals my slope of negative 3 halves. Now, this is going to be x minus 0. So instead of saying x minus 0, I'm just going to say x. So I can have either one of these. I don't have to have both, but either one is perfectly acceptable. Okay, when we end up solving those, they become the same thing. All right, if there's any questions on that, please go ahead and write them down now. All right, the last thing we're going to look at is graphing these lines and making sure that we remember how to graph. So when I look here, this is in slope-intercept form. So that means that my slope is 3 halves and my y-intercept is 3, which is actually the point 0, 3. Okay? So when we are graphing lines, we're going to start with a point that we know on it first. I know the y-intercept is at 3, so I'm going to put a point here at 3. Then I know my slope is 3 halves, so that means I'm going to go up 3 and to the right 2 because these are both positive directions. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. I could also go both negative directions because a negative over a negative is a positive. So I could go down 3 and left 2. Either way, it's not going to matter. And then I go ahead and I'm going to connect those points so that I get my graph. All right. Kind of extend that a little bit here. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we are in point slope form. Okay. My point on the line is 1 negative 3, because remember, I'm subtracting. This is x minus x1 and y minus y1. So when I get the positive, I'm subtracting a negative. My slope is negative 2. Okay, so here's what's going to happen, guys. This video is about to run out. I promise I have maybe one or two more minutes. Um, so go ahead and I'm going to pause this here, switch over to part two of the video. Again, I promise you it's just going to be finishing up those two examples. So go switch on over to the next video now.